Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm Samer, along with my co-host Stank and Poppy Latte, and you're watching the Loose Cannons presented by Red Cap Plumbing and Air, a Tampa-based company who takes pride in their reputation for timely service, professional results, and exceeding your expectations. They truly define hashtag Tampa Proud. It's the bye week. We have a special edition of the show for you guys today. We're hanging out with the one, the only, Mr. Jones, Ron Rojo. What's up, man? Welcome to the show, bro. What's good, man? How y'all doing? doing good man We're really good. good bro we have rojo on the show so thank you. The show. i'm doing great samer's not doing that great last week jake said you look phenomenal you're not looking as good this week but i you know other than that i'm doing great listen christian I, I can't i can't get the makeup team every single week every single day bro the makeup team comes in on sundays makes gets me all nice and, and you know pretty and beautiful for, for, for the live <laughs> right. show and then we're good to go but enough about me <laughs> Let's talk about. Yeah, people the, are not tuning yeah, in. They're not tuning here. You're mad at all. No, 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 they're not. Oh uh, man, I, I, Rojo, right off the bat, man, you had that ridiculous game against Carolina. Almost hit 200 yards. You had that oh, yeah. ridiculous, the, the longest play in in Tampa Bay Buccaneers history. And it was right before Thanksgiving, so I got to ask, what did you give those big hogs up front for that day that you had? <laughs> Yeah, man, definitely got to give a shout out to them boys for making that all happen. You know, just that, that's what Coach calls, you know, like 11 right right there. But, uh, yeah, I ain't, I ain't did nothing for them yet. Uh, they, they did the turkey time with uh, O-line for the community and things like that. But, no, nah, I ain't give them nothing yet. Just, you, didn't, you run out and get them PS5s or anything? <laughs> nah, nothing like that. Yeah, <laughs> we won't tell. Who can get a PS5 right now anyways, bro? Well, it's a Rojo, if Rojo can't get PS5, I, then none of us can. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm still on the old box, too, so I got my PS4 and the Xbox. But, yeah, I want the new Xbox, but I'm not really a PS5 guy. Well, oh, you got to try the controller, bro. I, I got, got one. The controller's I got, legit. I got to connect. I got to connect. has to do with the truck. A little accident here and there, but I can get you one. I work at UPS. <laughs> if one falls off, you know, it's whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I, I ain't seen nothing, man. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, hey, bro, I'm actually upset about that run, bro, because my cousin was in from out of town, and he just happened to change the channel. And really? he had it on Red Zone, and I thought I was watching the game, and then all of a sudden I get a text like, go, Road, what the fuck, Rojo? Uh, what's go? I click back, and you're celebrating the end zone. I'm like, weren't we just on the two? What, what just? Yeah, that's great. That's how I think, man. That's the opposite. End zone. It was that fast, bro. You ran to the end zone that damn fast. No, nah, yeah, man. Bro. Bro, Joe, I feel like ever since the NFL Network, like, blessed you with the angry runs. Like, I feel like you are the face of anger. I feel like you're actually running angrier now that they, they've they given you that 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 crown. Like, I feel like you're out there with bad intentions. Mm -hmm. um, not that you didn't run hard before, but it just, just seems like you've stepped up your game even higher now. Yeah, yeah, I definitely feel that, you know, uh, just, you know, being out there, giving more carries and things like that, you know, just definitely get you going as the game going along. So, you know, Coach always says, you know, he's going to ride with me, things like that. So they've been showing their confidence in me. So just trying to make the most of it, you know. Uh, yeah, we don't see you out there making business decisions and, ooh. you know, avoiding contact. It looks like you're taking it to the defenders and linebackers. And, of course, Bucks fans love to see that. You know, we've had, you know, kind of a rough history with running backs. Um, you know, we don't have the greatest history, but we had a guy like Allstott, who's a, a god in this community, who used to just punish defenders. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, and the guy who formerly wore, wore your number uh, and LeGarrette Blunt uh, used to put it on people. So it's good to see you out there punishing the defense because, you know, they're always trying to take your head off. Yeah, for real. That's why I feel like, yeah, my game, I'm a good mix of, you know, speed and a little bit of power in there, too. Oh, you almost broke. I ain't like blowing an all star now. They, they, they was 240, really get down, <laughs> and, you know, straight truck. Uh, yeah, yeah, we try to get it at the mud, too. Bro, you almost had a huge one against the Chiefs the other day, bro. That safety in the box. Golly, he made a business decision, dove right for your ankles, bro. You almost hurt, you almost hurtled him. That would have been 88 out the gate, bro. Yeah, man. I was just there. A couple possessions in that game, yeah. Uh, yeah, let it get a two out of hand. We got too far behind, I guess. So, no. They had to go to the, the, the hurry up offense. Rojo, I was going to ask you, man, from, you know, your first year to this is your third year now, right? Um, we've seen you progress and get better, obviously get more playing time, get more opportunities. 
what what was so different? What was your biggest adjustment when you first came into the league from from college? I know you didn't get a lot of opportunities that rookie year, but what was it that kind of hit you and you're like, okay, I really got to work on this if I'm going to make it at this level? Yeah, I say uh, just I didn't come in, you know, as prepared. You know, I just thought, you know, uh, I could get away with the same things I did in college, you know. Uh, but yeah, it just takes more integrity of the game, and I really got to credit, you know, uh, Coach Luke, you know, giving me that after that summer, you know, just help me get, you know, my feet back because uh, I didn't play, you know, so it was like a red shirt. Like you said, I was mainly on special teams. And, you know, I knew I wanted to be, you know, every down back in this league, so I just had to go prove myself. Dirk Cutter's stupid. <coughs> sorry, Dirk. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened to my throat there. Dirk, Dirk Cutter's, like, just stupid. <coughs> sorry. Um, uh, wow. Yeah, I, I just had something in my throat there. <coughs> Give me hey, 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 Rojo, we saw a lot of footage of you running the, those hills. Uh, I, I don't. I get the feeling because Coach Luke was on the podcast with us that he he's he doesn't take it lightly on you, man. Because uh, at the end of our show with him, oh boy, I felt like running through a wall. I even sent him a shirtless <laughs> picture. I, I was like, I gotta get myself in shape. And be honest with you, since then I I have gotten myself into shape. Luke just has that way of I don't know connecting and inspiring. Um, you know, and he talked a lot about your transformation physically. Uh, you know, do you credit that physical transformation towards, you know, what we're seeing on the field now? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I say, like, you know, like you said, the hills give me more, like, endurance, you know, in my runs and things like that, you know, because the fourth quarter, you know, I'm just starting to heat up. And, you know, most guys, you know, start to break down towards the game. But, uh, yeah, I definitely feel that, too. But, uh, he, he got you working out and stuff now, so you got the six pack going on. Bro, we were, so, oh, we we're supposed I wouldn't, to go listen, thousand. you're going to – six pack – I'm 44 years old. I'm, I got kind of like a like a bottle of wine. I, you know, I, it's not quite the six pack yet. Oh, yeah, yeah. I heard wine's good for you, yeah. Hey, yeah. we were we were supposed to be submitting uh, before pictures. Stank was the only one that did it. And after pictures – and we are supposed to be doing a 1,000 push-ups and sit-ups a day. We didn't oh, quite get there. I, I I started day one and I got to about thirty push ups and then I said I'll finish the nine hundred and seventy later and I just never got around to it. And <laughs> here we are. Well I sent him a I, I sent Coach a picture, but apparently it was only supposed to be waist up and we're supposed to be clothed for the most part. I, it was like a full on yeah, like wrong, that's the wrong the most full on <laughs> that was wrong photo. Sure, and then and then I misunderstood when he said he needs to be able to post it, so I sent him one with the with the Borat, you know, main keeny <laughs> thing. But but it, it <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I misunderstood. I don't know what coach wants from me, man. I, I, he told me the other day, if I'm ever in Arizona, he'll run hills with me. I said, man, what? What? What does that oh, even yeah. mean? I'm not doing that. You're crazy. You pay somebody to run the hill for you, Samer. Damn Samer straight, would bro. pay somebody. He would <laughs> just pay right. somebody. I pay but, people Rojo. to go to the gym for me, Rojo. Rojo, <laughs> you, you, you mentioned the fourth quarter. You start to get warmed up as everybody starts to slow down. And this is going to be more of a statement than it is a question. You don't have, you don't have to give me an expression. You don't have to give an answer nothing, but. There was a player that played here a while back. He's on ESPN now. He wrote a book. It's called Throw Me the Damn Ball. Can we get Rojo the football, please? Can we get this man 15 to 20 coaches? Keyshawn Johnson, throw me the damn ball. Just hand the damn ball off 15, 20 times, minimum. That should just be it. No questions. Sorry, I had to get that out there. Nah, he I agrees know. with you. I can tell. Yeah, I'm with you, man. You know, more touch the, the merrier. But you know, I, like you said, you just got to go with the with the game flow. For sure. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's frustrating as Bucks fans to see you know you have some momentum and then it be taken away. And I get it. It all it makes sense to me. Like there's certain packages you use, certain guys you use in certain packages. It seems like you worked really hard in the off season uh, on on trying to become a, a all around back, you know, in regards to your your catching ability, um, and you you know, we've seen an improvement. Obviously, you took one to the house on a, on the past last week. Uh, you know, was that your main f- focus in the off season trying to trying to become that back that can be on the field and on all three downs? Yeah, definitely. And uh, you know, it's been a crazy off season. Y'all know, just you know. Mm-hmm push back camp and then, you know, not getting to work with guys like you know. So we couldn't we kinda we were able to build a report but not, you know, how we'd like. So uh yeah, just certain situations, you know, I try to, you know, try to branch myself out and just become, yeah, that more complete player like you were saying. But uh yeah, it just trickles down to, you know, giving an opportunity. So when I'm in there, you know, I gotta make it make it happen. Rojo, 
you played with two different quarterbacks so far in your career, right? You played with Jameis. Everybody knew Jameis. Everybody knew how good of a teammate Jameis was. I'm sure you guys are still buddies in, in some capacity. When it came down that Tom Brady was coming to town, this is kind of a two-part question. What was the one thing you said when you found out? Like, what, what you said to yourself, what am I going to absorb from this man when I'm around him? Because he's he's the fucking GOAT, right? He, he's Tom Brady. He's the GOAT. It's like Michael Jordan walking in, in the building, right? So what was the one thing you thought to yourself, I have to gain X from him? And then when he arrived here, what's the biggest difference you're noticing from him to any other quarterback you've ever played with? Not just, you know, in the NFL, just in general, what are you seeing from him that just separates him from everybody else that you're hoping that you can absorb and, you know, kind of emulate, you know, at your position? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The first thing I thought, you know, uh, was, yeah, just how he used James White, you know, back in the day when uh, they were on them championship runs and he was telling me, you know, about guys like Corey Dillon and things like that. So I immediately thought check downs, you know, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> you know, you got to check your blocking assignment, but then once I get out, you know, be expecting the ball and things like that. So, uh, but yeah, I just try to take in what he says, you know, uh, cause he can read a defense, you know, like that. Like, you know, he'll uh, change the play at the line, you know, change the protection, so things like that. So it's really like having a coach out there versus, you know, uh, some of the young guys I played with. It. Well, I guess uh, Fitz Magic, he was a he was a vet too, like that. But yeah, definitely different presence in there. In the Bro, Joe, is it is the level of intensity almost too much to having Tom around at times? Like, <laughs> I, I'm assuming that trying to live up to his expectations or whatever your in your mind his expectations are. I mean, the guy's been to nine Super Bowls, six rings. There's got to be part of you that, you know, is afraid to fail because you don't want to disappoint him. Is Am I making that up or is that a real thing? No, I think it's more of a, you know, a team-oriented thing. And mm -hmm. you know, like we know who we got, you know, back there. And that's why we, we feel like no matter what the score is, we can come back. You know, with, you know, you look at the team, like I never thought I'd be playing with guys like, you know, a, B, you know, Gronk and all those guys. So uh, we just know that we got to put it all together because, you know, uh, you know, it's a short window in the league in the NFL and things like that. So, yeah, definitely got to make it happen. But. Especially at the running back position. Yeah, even even more so with me. Yeah, thanks. You see a guy like Frank Gore who the, okay. you know, I, I, I still – it doesn't make sense how he's still playing in this league. Um, didn't, he, didn't he make a bet with his son that he would have more yards than his son this year? Like, that guy's <laughs> – maniacal bro i actually feel bad he's with the jets like what's going on bro? Dude, I, I, heard, I heard a report that he's he's staying in the league until his son gets drafted so that he can be on the same team as his kid just for one year to be able to say i played with my son and give him you know real life coaching like that that's pretty fucking dope um, I think I too, yeah for sure um in the off season roger they brought in a guy by the name of lashawn mccoy and a lot of people you know mentioned you know how how capable he is out of the backfield he's got great hands he's one of the best you know yak receiving running backs in the history of the nfl one could argue what but they also talked about how he was kind of brought in to help you out mentor you a little bit from a vet standpoint what have you picked up from him little like nuances little things like that 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 have helped you in your game this season because you're the you know you're number five in rushing in the nfl right now with limited touches keep that in mind too what have you picked up from from mccoy uh, yeah, Shady, he always talks about, you know, just getting a pre-snap read and, uh, and, like, you know, he'll tell me, you know, obviously every every player on the defense got a gap, you know. You like get to the line, you know, you should expect, you know, to get outside and get inside that block, things like that. So he's helped me, uh, like, you know, before the staff, things like that. And then uh, open field, you know, because he, he got that juice. Like, uh, like Shady, yeah, he still be breaking people off in practice. And, uh, like, bro, you got to teach me those jump cuts, man. Like, how you doing that with the ball and stuff? And I'm like – yeah, man. So uh, definitely, yeah. He's one of one of my favorite running backs before he even came. So again, you know, never thought I'd be playing and being able to learn from guys like that. So I definitely try to take it in literally every day. So when we're on the field, mm -hmm. how you like in Tampa? Three years in, man. I know you're a West Coast guy. <laughs> yeah, uh, Tampa. It's nice. It's different. It's, it's real low key. It's a lot different from Miami. So that's where that's oh, where I'll be in the off season. <laughs> 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 but, uh, yeah. Tampa, Tampa's nice, you know. It's, uh, you, do you ever, when you're in Miami, do you ever, uh, you know, see anybody famous? Like, I don't know, like a DJ Khaled or somebody when you're out there hanging out? Uh, I think last time I was there, we went to a Meek Mill. He, he had a, like, performance. But uh, I don't know if you know this, but DJ yeah, Khaled. Right there. He, he's on the podcast with us right now. <laughs> For real? <laughs> <I'll ask you. laughs> he didn't even realize he's it, man. He didn't even realize it. Hey, yeah. you know, hey. You know, you know, man, you know how we do is win, you know what I mean? 
No, that's what I'm saying. All we do is win. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I, I got to ask you, man. Uh, this season is different than all the other seasons. There's a lot of spotlight on you guys. You know, you guys are on ESPN every day. It's like watching LeBron James with the Lakers. You're always on there out. You know, we never saw you guys on there. Now you guys are always on TV, right? Yeah, that's right. That's what I'm saying. Everyone's at you guys under a magnifying glass. Uh, has that been kind of a weird adjustment? Do you guys have to deal with a little bit more media, a little bit more scrutiny? Do you guys kind of stay away from the media and the clippings and all that kind of stuff? Or is it part of, you know, just being in the NFL and you kind of just, just get acclimated to it? Yeah, I say it's, it's definitely a part of both. Like you said, uh, I, we, I, we never had a primetime game in three years, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> this year. So, you know, all our games were scheduled at once. So uh, that's been the first thing. Uh, but yeah, uh, with the media, not really, you know, for me at least, because uh, I kind of just, you know, do the same thing and go through the motions. But uh, yeah, yeah, every time you turn on the TV, yes, the ESPN, I just got to keep it, keep it, <laughs> go to the Netflix or something. But uh yeah, it's cool. You know, we you know we won this life. We just got to make the most of it. You know, a lot of a lot of big games down in here this year and stuff. So uh, you got to make that push and start. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about. I mean, obviously, nothing's good about a pandemic, but maybe one of the positive side effects is that there isn't media hanging around the team yeah, all exactly. the time. I can just imagine what the first month would have been like. You know, TMZ would have been here. Every camera crew from every every place would have been in here with their cameras. And then you would have had, I mean, I'm sure you already get sick of ha asking or answering Tom Brady questions, but like, if you, you know, if, if it was a normal time, it would be every week, every somebody in your locker, every time, what did Tom say to you in the, in the huddle? <laughs> every single week, you know, and you'd be like, I'm sick of hearing about this shit, man. Yeah. That's true too. Cause yeah, they used to be in the locker room after practice and so they, they can't do that this year. So that's a good point you made there. That's, that's fair. And trust me, Rojo, it's been an adjustment for us fans too, bro. All these primetime games. I'm an old man, bro. I'm trying to follow the TV 12, man. I'm trying to be in bed by 8, 9 o'clock, and I can't do it. I don't like it. Yeah, I'm used man. to my 1 o'clock games, in and out, got my barbecue going, and then chill. Yeah. 9 o'clock, that's a, that's a waiting around all day. But I do have to ask you, and, and you know, there's been reports one way, there's been reports another way. Um, I think it was Gronkowski week one that said, man, you got to – or OJ, you got to bring your own juice because the lack of juice in the stadium has been a big effect on the players. Has it been stadium to stadium where they pump in crowd noise? Because on the TV broadcast, you hear the crowd, but do you hear no crowd at all in the stadiums that are empty, or are they pumping in noise? Uh, yeah, at, at certain stadiums, you don't hear no crowd at all. Like uh, the Giants game, the Monday night game. Nothing? That, uh, it, it, the lights were so bright, but there was nobody there, and there, there was no noise. And so you could hear, you know, TVs back there, Mike 51, Mike 51. Like, they, they hear everything. So it's kind of weird. It's definitely, you know – uh, you definitely got to bring your own juice. Yeah, that's that's literally what it is. That is eerie, bro. It's got to be yeah, a weird feeling. Just, just, I don't know. But I bet you the shit talkers on defense. <laughs> you know, now there's no way to escape it. Devin yeah. White. Yeah. Devin White. White. Yeah. Yeah, we heard Devin White from the stands. <laughs> you hear Devin White talking shit from the stands, man. Yeah, we team. were we went to the, we were at the KC game and you could hear Devin White's mouth and we were like up in the two hundreds. <laughs> Bro, when we were, I was I didn't get to go to that game, so I was watching at home. And before that big play where Tom threw it to Gronk, I think it was like a thirty-nine yard right up the seam. Before that play, you could hear Tom audibly on the TV broadcast. You could hear him say, "Rob, this is your play." Like we heard that from the from my living. I'm like, "Damn, this bitch is going to Gronk!" And then there it was, and I was like, "How the fuck did the defense not hear that?" Um, is there? Yeah, it, <laughs> stop. yeah that's we, saying something, bro. That's that's that, that's next level. Man. <laughs> yeah, so 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 we had Big Red on here in the off season, right? And everybody kind of made a big deal out of the the baby powder on the towel, you know, sliding that in the back of his ass. Um, Tom Brady request, right? So I got to ask you: is there is has there been a, like a weird, uh, I don't know, a weird training request or something that Tom? What's the weirdest thing that Tom has told you that actually is part of like your Sunday game? Like, what's the weirdest thing that he's brought up? Uh, oh boy, I know uh, there's got to be something. <laughs> Hey, that's a, that's a tough one. Uh, I'm trying to think. Has he ever shamed you for like bringing fast food into the locker room or something? Like gave you that disappointed look. How, like, how dare you have food? You really gonna eat a taco taco in front of me? You gonna yeah. eat that? You gonna eat that real milk ice cream? Yeah. <laughs> you gonna eat that real milk ice cream shake without not an avocado one? You gonna do that, Rojo, right in front of me? I think, yeah, I had like some Popeyes or something. You know, getting on the plane before we about to board. He he just. Mm-hmm. 
could do better, bro. You know, you could do better, bro. <laughs> is it like having? Is is he like having a dad in the locker room? Like, is it to that kind of level? Uh, nah, he he's really one of the guys. You know, he's he's real laid back and cool. But uh, once yeah, you know, yeah, once you know, <laughs> scoreboard's not yeah. looking like this. Yeah, <laughs> it's wake up time. You know, when you when you see him do this with the helmet. Yeah, on the he, floor, you know it got he's real. notorious for undressing his teammates uh, in front of the camera, off the camera. I'm assuming there's some of that, and uh, you probably knew that going in. And you know that we, you know when this pandemic hit and that Jordan documentary dropped, that's all I could think of going into <laughs> yeah, the season he was like, like the last day, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. exactly. Like Jordan used to be so hard on his teammates, and is is there a little of that from Tom out there? Uh, yeah, not not so much with me, but uh, I do remember. Yeah, a couple of games, you know, uh, you know, just telling guys to wake up, you know, just motivating us, mm -hmm. things like that. But you know, it's good. Like when you hear from six time, like you know, you you gonna take it, you know, to to the chest. So uh, yeah, time. gotta I like wake that. up, man. <laughs> it's time to go. You know, we're taking that from you, Drojo. I'm yeah, just letting you know. Um, we're not calling him the goat anymore. We're calling him six time. Six time. Like he, dubbed, he dubbed you Ron, so we're and you dubbed him six times. So All right, man. you go. <laughs> uh, I got to DJ Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Ro Rojo, um, we're, we got like, you are in a position to make a pro bowl this year. Right. And I know now there's the fan voting is open. People can hashtag, uh, whatever that hashtag is. I'll let you, I'm pretty sure you know what it is. Um, what would it mean for you to get to the pro bowl? Um, third year, not many running backs for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers make it to the pro bowl. So what would it mean to get to the pro bowl? Uh, yeah, it'd mean a lot, you know, it just, uh, again, you know, it would be, uh, saying a lot coming from from year one to year three where I am now, just the progression and and that's just what I really try to show the team and the organization and the fans is you know getting better every year and that uh, you know they haven't even seen the best so you know I got a lot more that I can do you know uh, and just yeah trying to progress every year so it would be you know honor and probably yeah my biggest accomplishment you know uh, on the first one. Bro, Joe, you have to get frustrated like the fans do. I mean, I, I think a lot of fans expected more out of this team offensively. And then all of a sudden you guys explode and you're, you're back. And I'm just talking about the Chiefs game. All of a sudden you guys explode. You're back in the game. Like you guys hold yourself to a high standard, I'm pretty sure. Um, you, you said it yourself. We haven't seen the best out of this team. And I think you're just scratching the surface with your ability. Are you excited going into the last quarter of the season? Are you guys expecting to just take your destiny in your own hands and, and finish this season strong? Yeah, because uh, yeah, we know we know what's ahead of us and what we can accomplish. Like you said, we got six time back there, so you know, once we get the ball rolling, you know, just got to keep that momentum. And I think it's just uh, been, you know, like uh, coach said, you know, a couple of slow starts. You know, we find ourselves behind the chains and you know, uh, having to fight and kind of get off the game plan a little bit. So. Yeah, just staying in there with teams, and you know, because if it comes down to the fourth, you know, there's nobody else that you would want as your quarterback. And you know, with the guys we have around and the defense we have, you know, we feel like we can, you know, once we get into the, the tournament, make some noise. And they're good teams. You guys are fake. It's not like you're struggling yeah. against nobody's. It's the, it's the Saints and the Rams and world champs. Yeah, and, and the world yeah. champs. I mean, those are tough teams, and they're going to make you pay when you make mistakes. So, um, yeah, but I'm sure you guys are hard on yourselves for that for for not, you know, accomplishing or not not you know, winning those games for sure. Yeah, definitely. It's Rojo. a really simple recipe. It's uh, really simple. R Rojo, listen, uh, Tom's probably going to watch this. We, we know the Bucks watch it. It's really simple. Listen, give the ball to 27 <laughs> and then play action and throw it to my favorite player, 13. No matter what. I don't care what, it, what happens pre-snap. <laughs> Just fucking play action and throw it to 13. And if you get inside the five, you give it to 27. Yeah, let's do that. I, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that. He oh, just, hey. that's, he that's just, what I do on Madden, so yeah, I'm, I'm with that, man. <laughs> that's what he man, does. I, I, I have won games online with the Bucks where I pass the ball three or four times and I'm just constantly giving the ball to 27, just constantly. Hey, so, I'm not going to lie. I just got the next version, the new version. It dropped today yes. for, for uh, the PS5 version of, uh, of Madden. It's different, Rojo. It's a lot nicer, a lot, 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 lot more momentum. The player movement's real. I had 125 yards rushing with you. I'm just saying. We gave the ball 15 times. I'm, it's a simple recipe. It's that's simple. That's the average right there, bro. I still ain't got it. I got to get the new system, though. Man. Sorry. Yeah, everybody's saying 2K is looking good, too. So 2K is pretty fine. Oh, how yeah. weird is that you get to play your, <laughs> with yourself on those games? Like, you can be yourself. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right. As yourself, let me bro. Let me rephrase that for a second. Let me rephrase that. 
play <laughs> as yourself on those games. Is that that's got to be strange? Yeah, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely great. It's something that we always wanted. Like really, when they start making uh, NCAA, you know, I always mm-hmm. want to be on that. But yeah, my next goal is to get that X Factor on. Oh, man, you know, I got to get that, yes. that star or whatever. And then we can really make some magic. So yeah. So are you that guy who gets mad at your ratings? You look at it like I'm, I'm better than that. Oh yeah, I, I was kind of mad. They they dropped my speed down, man. I went from a 93 to like a 90, 91 or something. I I, I wasn't feeling that. They don't even know hustle. That's why. After the 98 yard touchdown, why the hell would they drop your speed? What the, what? Saying, man. Like I, I was looking up at the at the jumbo charm, man. They talking about I'm slowing down. I'm, no, I'm trying to see what buddy is. So I can swerve. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I got I got to talk to. The, Ocho Cinco or somebody, whoever. Yeah, you you need to tell you need to also tell Ocho Cinco that on um, Matt they don't give you enough of that that stiff arm power, bro. I'm Wait, stiff arm and I'm not getting anybody. I'm trying. I'm like, God damn, this bitch ain't doing shit. And I've <laughs> I've seen right I've seen you put some guys on their ass, especially at that first Carolina game. Ooh, oh my we, god, we fucking went nuts on that one, dude. We went nuts on that. Holy the shit! Touchdown, yeah, the touchdown one. That was just should, hey, he got he has a mother, Rojo. Okay. Watches the game. Yeah, yeah, doing like that. Gotta put the kids to bed, man. He has a family. <laughs> bro. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think they're being a little stingy on the ratings, though. But that's just me. Who would you say? And I should, we should ask this earlier, but I, I, I'd be I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you. Who would you say you you would compare yourself to? Modern and old throwback. era, throwback era. Uh, yeah. One my my favorite, you know, running back watching when I was growing up was Jamal Charles. I got a lot of uh, a lot of those comparisons coming out, but uh, I'll probably go with him. Is he does he count as modern? And, and, and. He's like yeah, in the middle. Kind of both. You know, that's kind of in the middle. Yeah, that works. That works. Okay. We already know Coach Luke is uh, on the Walter Payton train with Walter you. Payton. Yeah, yeah, How that, much that, Walter that, Payton that, tape that, have you watched? <laughs> yeah, he he. he I, I watch that football life. Uh, that's that's what we always watch. Uh, Every the first day of training, you know, come and watch the story. Watch you know, him on just the hills. Yeah, and, and just relive it. And that's what the, the training that he got us on too. So it's definitely been paying off for me. Is that the same is that the same hill? No, it's not the same hills, but it's similar to the training Jerry Rice did, right? The hill the hills running and stuff like that. Right? Uh yeah, I think Rice did some training like that too. I know uh yeah, I remember from watching the, the sweetness documentary that, you know, L T built one in his backyard too, uh Thomason, so yeah, that's another Texas legend. So. Yeah, there's no hills that run here in Tampa, bro. We ain't running. Oh, yeah, that's one. Oh, build that's one. Why I can't train here. <laughs> <laughs> they, they got them where they start building the new subdivisions. They, like, build that big-ass <laughs> hill right there. Right no, they got them the over, like, the landfill. Imagine, oh, hey, cool. listen, if you're really that hungry, go out to the landfill and run them, <laughs> them trash hills that they got out there. <laughs> yeah, man, that, that, that'll that fuck up your ankles right there. Rojo, yeah. you, you guys. You... What happened? What? What was that? You. Like a taco spot out here? Like, what was the best one? Because I've been to Lowy's. Lowy's. Oh, ta- Taco de Oro, bro. Right over here on 56, bro. Right, right down the street from the, from the outlet, Actually, bro. Come on, I've bro. got a place for you, Rojo, that's right yeah. down the street from, from the Bucks training facility. It's called Acapulco Tacos. It's like f- five minutes. Hold on. Acapulco. You pull hey, up. I'm write this me. down. <laughs> <laughs> hey, his stank is bougie, bro. He knows Listen, me. Listen, I'm bougie, and I eat out a lot. You <laughs> got... You, hey, back there in the kitchen, you got some Moellas back there cooking, bro. They like they shrimp it up. Bro, bro. It's the real deal. Shout right. out to Acapulco Tacos. The homies that run <laughs> that, that place are awesome. And, you, know, uh, you know, you know what's crazy? I've noticed white people always know where the best taco joints are. How like Mexicans don't ever tell me where the best taco ro- ro- joints ro- are, ro- but white yeah. people do. If this will focus, there, there, uh, there it is. Yeah, Acapulco Taqueria. That's it. Right, to, a free, free, free plug too. They're not even a sponsor. Uh, he's, he's you brought up food, Rojo. He's ordering. And we, brought up food. Yeah, you brought it up. So we're just gonna oh, take. Man. We're gonna take the ball and run with it. Wait, oh, man. man. I had another football question, man. I had another. Well, football we can question. go back to football, but now cool. he brought up food, and I'm hungry. We're on the food. Now I'm thinking about tacos. I'm gonna let you ask the question, Ali. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's First a two part. It's, it's unfair. I gotta talk about food. I'm on a 45 day clean right now. Cleanse. You know, <laughs> it's a little bit unfair, but. Roger, I don't know how much you, how much of our show you've actually watched, but we have two very important questions that we ask all of our guests. Sometimes there's a third question, but we'll probably spare you that one. But there are two main questions we got to ask, right? And this this determines if you even come back on the show. Like this is a big deal. One, this I'm is getting a big very deal. nervous right now. This is yeah, a big deal, nervous. right? And, and and I'm, I'm believe, assuming though, you're like us. The three of us, our favorite food ever is a chicken wing, right? There's nothing better. I don't give a fuck about pizza. 
chicken nope. wings, right? Chicken now, wings. when you have chicken wings, this is question one. Are you going sloppy, wet, or are you going dry rub? Dang, it depends. If you had to Excuse choose, me. if you had are to you, choose. You, want a you only have one. Like you about to kick back and watch the game, or you you with your shoddy? Like, are you on like you know what I mean? No, no, you kicking back watching the game, kicking bro. Back. You oh, kicking back. Trying to stay clean. Like He's got a trying to stay clean. He's got different <laughs> wings for different occasions, bro. I love this. <laughs> this is you, the TV, and the chicken wings. Oh okay. yeah, I'm getting sloppy. I'm getting dirty with it because if I'm getting my wings, I really like. I, I ain't gonna be texting or nothing about it anyway. So, but no. if you got if you got a girl on on your on your side and she's wearing something nice, you're gonna go with the dry rub because you don't want to get sauce on her. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the the, the boneless, the chicken bites, you know. And I, I don't really want to do that, so. Mm. Yo, I like the fact you call them chicken bites though, because people be calling yeah. them boneless wings. They're not boneless yeah, wings. They're, they're not nuggets. really wings, bro. They they boneless bites. So yeah, yeah I right. knew I knew I so, fucked so up. So let, let me give you guys some Hold advice. On. If you guys are gonna eat sloppy ass wings, like uh, of course I prefer. Do you know when you go zip lining, they they sell you those like lanyards you put around your neck, and you can slide your phone into that clear like sleeve, and then you can still text and shit. You can check your shit while you're fucking hanging like three oh, million feet park. in the air. All right, so those definitely a pro. You slide your phone into one of those things around your neck, and then you start eating. And then if you got to answer the phone, you take your sloppy ass hands. You can still send a text message. You can send out a tweet like, "Yo, man, what the fuck are you doing out there, Dirk?" Stuff like that, right? That's how you eat a wing in front of a football game. All right. Oh, no, man. Now, here's the, here's the second part of this question and the more important part. Yeah, this is definitely this, more important. This is huge, man. We have banned people from coming back on the show yeah. because they answered this question incorrectly. And yes, Listen, there is an incorrect. Man, man, no you, man, you can take, <laughs> you take I'm, I'm going to just give you a piece of advice. I'm going to blink twice. If you have the wrong answer, you could take a medical exemption, okay? Yeah, we had Karma Vitale took a medical exemption on this question. Yeah, Car so. Carmen came on and she took a medical exemption. All if right. you're having those saucy, extra crispy, though, Mm -hmm. Wings, are you dipping them in blue cheese or ranch? <clears throat> I mean, shit. Man, so. That's too easy, dog. I ain't even gonna answer. <laughs> we don't know you out. No. Oh, no, you gotta answer. Who, who, you gotta who answer. blue cheese, bro? Oh, oh no! no. Oh. Come on, man. Oh, it's a blue no. cheese podcast right no. here. Blue oh, cheese, no. no. Man, Luke should have gave me a heads up or something. Man. <laughs> we were vibing. We were vibing. I thought we were gonna be Cali four best. Must be a California yeah. thing, man. Best it's buds. Thing. It's okay. Come on, It'll man. They still need to give me the damn ball. <laughs> the medical, that's right. That's right. Oh, no. Blue, blue cheese kind of tastes like old cares or something. like. Oh. What kind of blue cheese you having, bro? <laughs> yeah, bro. Maybe you... Exactly. You need to step your blue cheese game up and get some of the good shit. Damn. Y'all y'all all from Florida? Yeah. Yes, born and raised. Right. We are born all in my, Born in Miami, bro. Damn. Ben Buck Miami, fans Miami, are... Miami's too busy for me. Ben Buck fans are... Branch, man. I don't know this. Buck fans our entire <laughs> lives too, man. It's all right, man. Hey, right. just cut that part out. I, I ain't trying. No, to no, that. no, <laughs> no, 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 no. You gotta share. Sometimes you gotta share. No. You know the, the bad parts too. People are gonna just so you know. There's a there's a. Oh, we you have, have you have, have your mob. people out there who love ranch. We have a mob that follows us that 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 call themselves the the ranch gang. So you're, you're just part of that now. That's it's okay. It's fine. Yeah. The ranch gang. <laughs> all right. I'm, 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 Follow tacos too. He's trying to order food while we're on the fucking podcast. This guy is ordering That's food it. while yeah, we're think, on I, I the podcast. Okay, hey, Rojo, we got to know what you're ordering, bro. What you yeah, ordering? Bro, yeah, you yeah. Go ahead and put the order in. I'm about to gain about five pounds this week. Okay. Right on, off on Sunday. It's the bye week, bro. It's and Tom, week, Tom's bro. not here to Tom's not here to shame you. Yeah, no more diet this week. Dog. Exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna come back like the carrot. And don't worry, Coach Luke won't, won't watch this either. And oh, Luke, he's gonna call you after and say he, he probably sleep by now anyway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got he's we got to know though, bro. What you do? You going with the classic tacos? You go? You going with the burrito? You going with a quesadilla? What, 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 what? I ain't gonna lie, I did tacos uh, on Tuesday, so I'm probably I might go sloppy wings at night with some with some blue cheese. You don't ever have to apologize for talking. He said blue cheese. He said you know, blue it's, cheese. You know what's crazy? Oh, Every guest cheese. we have on here, we talk about the wings. When we get off the podcast, they go get wings or they go make yeah, wings. Please. Every fucking guest. And you know Every. what? I even do it too, man. That, that's, we're changing people's lives, man. You I'm bringing, can't have wings. I'm going to bring it back to football, though. What? Yeah, okay. I got a question for you. You got to go, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. What, uh, what are the best wings there? Ooh, my house. We you're looking. One. You're looking at the three. You're looking right at the three amigos as it relates to the best wings. Well, know where he can buy in America. What, where he can buy the best wings. Where he can buy the best wings. Yeah. Stank, go ahead. Stank's Listen, have to know this. you said Winghouse and Winghouse. People are gonna be like, "Oh, Winghouse sucks." Winghouse has 
a, a naked wing. It's a blackened wing. That's good. But I like my wings dry rub. So you probably won't fuck with the wings that I really love. Um, man, I mean, it's hard to get bad chicken wings. Wing King. Wing King's I mean, all bad. those spots are when you're in a pinch, you can do Wing King. You can do all those. But uh, you know who has good good chicken wings, too? Um, damn, I got just draw, drew a blank. <laughs> Listen, I'm not in Tampa. I live down in Sarasota. I know the answer in Sarasota. It's a place called. It's a joint called Wings and Things. Unreal, ridiculously good wings, and they make a Parmesan, a garlic parm that actually tastes good, and isn't oily. My favorite wing runny. here in Tampa. Uh, how far is Sarasota from Tampa? No, hour and a half, bro. Hour, hour and a half. Nah, forty five minutes. Forty five minutes, and you hit that pedal. Don't, but bro, don't do bro. that. We don't. We don't need another JPP. My favorite wings here are at Wiregrass Mall at a place called Nine Hundred Degrees Pizza. They cook them two ways. They fry them and they put them in the brick oven. Oh, and dude. they char them a little bit. Yes. They sauce them and then they put them back in the oven. They're insane. They're crispy, but they fall off the bone. They're kind of like my wings. It's just it's an adventure. It takes you on a roller coaster on a journey. It's amazing. Yeah, it's Anthony, Anthony's coal fire pizza does that too. They do yeah. coal fire wings. Yeah, I got them written down now too, though. So yeah, <laughs> you, you got you got put on their headlines barbershop as well. Headlines barbershop. Headlines barbershop. That's I own those. That's where you got to go to get a cut, bro. Wings house, wings and things, nine hundred degrees. <laughs> This guy's on this podcast taking food notes. <laughs> Tom Brady's gonna be like, what'd you gain from that podcast? Well, I got a bunch of places I can go eat that you're not allowed to go with. Tom Brady's <laughs> never coming on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, no. I guarantee you, Tom Brady behind the scenes, he he has eaten an entire thing of Oreos and, and just, you know, just shoved it in his face and not, you know, in the bathroom hiding from Giselle. Everyone's sleeping. Bro, yeah. bro, but before, before 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 he did the TB12 shit, remember he used to, he used to take on offensive linemen and, chug and, beer. And chug and beer, yeah. Like he used to out chug those big fuckers, but um I was, I'm gonna bring him back a little bit to the Bucks now, right? And and because I didn't get to ask this earlier. Um, you guys are one of the teams that has one of the latest bye weeks this season. And like, can you speak to just like how much of a wear and tear that kind of that, that how how much does that wear on you guys that you guys are now in week twelve before you finally get to kind of take a step back, recoup, and just kind of like rest mentally. Because, you know, it's been 11 straight week, or sorry, 12 straight games, you know? And some of them short weeks. Yeah, definitely. And that's what, like, like you were saying with the foul time games, you know, having a Thursday and come back on a, a Sunday and a Sunday to a Monday. So, yeah, it's definitely been different. Uh, it definitely uh, much needed, too. Came at a good time, too, I would say. I kind of like having the later bye weeks, you know, uh, you know, right after Thanksgiving and the holidays. So, you know, I was able to see in the family. But, uh, yeah, definitely, I think, it, you know, it took a toll. Uh, but you know, which I guess is part of the game. You know, we never control. So, well, the physical be- toll, but the mental as well. I mean, people like don't think about this year in itself, but the constant testing, the the mask wearing. You got to be careful. You can't go here. You can't just to be able to step away and say, "Man, I'm just gonna have some fucking chicken wings and some blue cheese tonight. Leave me the yeah, hell alone. Like- <laughs> Let me breathe." It's got to be huge, man. Just to unplug. And then come yeah, back swinging. And then outside of that, I mean, you got normal lives. I, you know, remember before the season started, and players were were making the decision on whether or they whether or not they wanted to play. Donovan Smith was one of those guys. You know, his wife was pregnant; he was about to have a newborn, and the emotional stress you guys have to be under, especially the guys with big families and their kids can't go and do things, and their families have to stay quarantined. Um, what's that been like for you, man? Not being able to really you know, have a life outside of football. Yeah, it's definitely been been different. You know, got like you said, got to stay in the house, you know. Uh, women want to go on dates, you know, you got to tell them no, you know. So I kind of like that part, but. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a built-in excuse. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, sorry. Like, you know, we can't go with Uber East, though. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's definitely been different, like you said. Just, yeah, like even the bye week, you know, can't go back home to Texas, you know, little things like that, you know, but it's sacrifice that we got to do to play the game with. That we love so uh been real fortunate you know to this year with uh with the uh, health you know uh, other than COVID and all that too, so. Ron, you're, you're you're a texas guy you 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 obviously know good barbecue you like smoke like a, you got a smoker at home or you are you in there with big red learning learning how to smoke meats and stuff <laughs> like that nah uh my, my friend actually owns a place back home called hutchins barbecue so that's that's my grocery spot i've been getting uh, rojo have you found a spot here yet because if you haven't i got it for you bro for real barbecue, I, 
Yeah, hey, I got a couple spots. Don't don't, don't, don't <laughs> sit on y'all rankings. You can but, never get good, enough good barbecue. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, you can't. So uh, what's your spot? It's real basic, bro. I, I like you know, you know. So what, what's your spot though? And I'll tell you my spot. It's uh, I went to one called Holy Hog. Oh yeah, Holy Hog is good. Holy Hog is good. Oh, it's up there. Okay, and uh, Four Four Rivers. Four Rivers. Four Rivers is good. Four Rivers is good. Okay, okay cool. Yeah, but 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 Rojo. It gets better. You're gonna write. You're gonna. You don't have to write this one down too. <laughs> this one's gonna remind you of home. Really now, that's saying something. It is legit. I'm going Conan's. What you got? Conan's. Conan's. Like the Just barbarian. Yes. With a K. Just trust me, bro. With a K. They got bars on the windows, bro. That's all you got. Oh, it's, a, it's, it's a truck though. No, it's a, it's like a house. That they oh, turn into a barbecue spot, bro. If it's barbecue and there's bars on the windows, that's just good. It's a house. Yeah, it's like, just fuck it. We just go. <laughs> we go bulldoze the garage and just install smokers. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. My spot is is Hanks and it's on Dale Mabry. And I actually I ran into Levante David there once. They got good catfish if you like catfish. Oh yeah. I do, I do. Oh Hanks is Hanks puts it down on the catfish. We've ended up talking about more food on this podcast, but that's fine. Yeah. I love it. Uh, Rojo, yeah. go go I into what our priorities are here. Yeah. Going well, into this bye week, bro. Yeah. Um but, look, that's 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 Conan's, bro. Okay. Oh yeah, that looks that's like it's a house, delicious. bro. Yep. Whichever yeah. one's on Uber Eats is getting delivered, so <laughs> <laughs> right. you can't be going to the restaurant. Hey Rojo, I was gonna ask, um, was there any emphasis? When you guys left for your bye week, was there any emphasis from the coaching and from the you know the organization in general about you know coming back COVID free? Did they kind of give you guys a little bit? Was there an emphasis on that before you guys left for the bye week? Yeah, and that's the thing. Like we 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 haven't been able to leave, so uh, we still get we get tested every day because yeah, he was like that after the downfall. You know, oh, he so continued that. That's what's up. So you can't go home. You can't go home to Texas. You can't. You yeah. can't. They won't allow you to. You you're stuck here. Yeah, we we we, we kind of stuck. So yeah, it's a that's why I say this this year is different with a, with the bye week, you know. Because usually we would be able to, but yeah, can't even catch a flight, you know. Unless you got you know a PJ who take every day and come back, you know, every day come. <laughs> got a guy like Tom, a guy like Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah six times do that. <laughs> six Tom, times. Tom, Tom's got a PJ. He's got he's got he's got he's got the jet. Yeah, on call. Yeah, on call. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as long I as you don't. Yeah, I got some new food spots to go to now, so I'll, I'll be chilling. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, um, this this coming, I think the next game when you guys play, you guys are doing the um, uh, what is it, cleats for the cause or cause for cleats? Um, do you? I think you've always you've done one every single season you've been in the NFL. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about what cause is on your cleats and and what it means to you and and how people can help? Yeah, so uh, the cause I chose this year was Mothers Against Police Brutality, and uh, you know it's, it's one that's obviously affected uh, a lot of communities and. You know, black and brown people across the globe, but definitely you know, my family, you know. Uh, so I had to do that. You know, I just encourage people to, you know, support the cause, you know, donate to uh, Mothers Against Police Brutality dot org, you know, and she's based out of Dallas, Texas. You know, her son's life was taken, you know, due to police violence, just like you know, members of my family and uh, one of my high school uh, classmates I lost this year, too, to the same issue. So, uh, you know, just con- see it continue happening, you know, definitely. You know, we're just trying to fight for a better day, so uh, I appreciate y'all. You know, they support that. Now, we'll, we'll definitely, like a fucked up year. Holy we'll definitely shit. link it, link it below in the description so people could go donate. Go fucking donate, guys. Goddamn, one dollar, one dollar, two dollars, three dollars, five dollars. Yeah. Hell yeah. We get, we get, you know, we get thousands of views on these videos. One dollar, that that's a lot of money. Come on now, that's what a the call. Fuck? That's a cause anybody can get behind, man, for sure. Appreciate Wouldn't it be great to to end 2020, which has been just beyond words. With the, with the Super Bowl run, Rojo? Yeah. I think, are, are, I think am I allowed to say that? Way, that's the only way, you know, we can, we can go out, you know, this year. It's, it's only right, you know, that the games in the city, you know, right there at the stadium, you know, 20 minutes down the road from where I'm at now. So I think I think it's it's about time to bring one back to the city, man. What y'all think? I, I agree with you. And not only do I agree with you, Samer gave a prediction, and that's not going to happen because our beloved Matt Gay is no longer here. He predicted that Matt Gay would hit the game-winning kick in Raymond James. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to go with two-minute drive, Brady doing what he does, but he listens to me, and he hands he it off to Rojo. Yes. Rojo. <laughs> Rojo, Rojo busts one for the game. Bro, you see how hungry Rojo is right now on this podcast. Right now. He's hungry right now. you got to feed this man. 
as hungry as I am on this podcast, that's how I am on the field. So I say, yeah. Yes, yeah, this used to everything. be. This used to be the unofficial podcast of Matt Gay, and since Matt's moved on, now it's, it's the Rojo podcast. Yes, this is a Rojo podcast. That, that's cool with me. Man. Hashtag free Rojo. By the yeah. way, do, do you talk shit on the field? Or hashtag, is it just, hashtag, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm, I'm hungry. Do, you, do you talk shit on the field? Like you see Zeke doing the feed me thing? or Because yeah. it just seems like you're just like business as usual. Get right back up, give it to the, give it to the ref, yeah. go back to the line of scrimmage. Next, next. It, it depends. If, if I know one of the guys on defense, yeah, you know, I'll talk a little bit. But yeah, most of the time, yeah, I'm trying to get back to the, get the next play. How, you got to be how, fun going to get somebody like, Ronald, like, like Devin White. That, yeah. that dude right there, boy. Talk yeah, I was – <laughs> I was going to ask, how crazy is it going against him in practice? Like, I'm sure he's talking shit, whether it's a practice field or a regular game. Like, how much how much intensity does he does he bring out of you guys, you personally and then the guys on, obviously on offense, so you guys are facing him in practice and obviously pregame too? Oh, yeah, definitely. He, he's one of the juice guys. And like you said, like, you know, he'll be talking trash during a walkthrough, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> you never say what he's around. But, you know, I love going against him. And the wild side, you know, the, the dudes really made me better, you know. If Rojo, know, that's, that's cool. Rojo, if if Devin White asked you to come, well, you're a Texas guy, so you probably would. But if he asked you to come and ride horses with him, are you are you gonna do it? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm definitely I'm definitely with it. You're a horse guy too. Yeah, I, I get on him. You know, I I ain't trained like he is and stuff, but I I roll something back in my. You don't? Day. Do you own any horses, or do you plan to have like your own stable at some point too? Nah, I, I don't own any, but my my uncle does. You know, down in Texas somewhere, so Damn. he got a couple in the stable. Yeah. That's what's up. I don't know. I think I, I don't think horses really trust me like that. So, um, I, <laughs> I, I personally, I personally it's can't. You're another horse. You're a horse. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Per, I personally can't. They probably don't trust because they see the biceps. Are like this guy's got arms that look like our legs. What the fuck is well, this? Look at Devin White's yeah. biceps. No, nah, yeah. he's been with them since birth. It's totally different. But I can't even get on a fucking horse. <laughs> One, they don't trust me because they know that I'm best friends with camels, right? So I can only get on a camel. <laughs> like I think I'm, I'm like obligated to only ride camels. But you know, you know. I feel that man. You got yeah, got to stay loyal. You got to stay true. Yeah, I'm brown, right? I I can only be on a camel that day. or or a magic carpet, but they don't fucking make those anymore, right? <laughs> what do you think about um? What do you think about the rook? Bond. Oh yeah. So yeah. What's up with like, Sneak? W- 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 what's up with Sneak? What do you think of him? Is it just is it just a, a matter of it sucks the off season he couldn't get a full you know you went through that your rookie year <clears throat> fuck Dirk, um but <laughs> what is it is, is it just because of the 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 shorted you know off season the COVID off season um because it looks like he has a, you know some talent but we haven't gotten to see much. Yeah, definitely, and that's the thing. Yeah, he he showed a lot of flash flashes and uh, growth, you know, along with myself, you know. And practicing things, and I think, yeah, he's gonna be a great player, you know, down the line once he gets his uh, opportunity. I think, like you said, just with the circumstances, you know, bringing in, you know, Shady and uh, Fernando and other things, you know, just kind of uh, he couldn't, you know, learn as fast, you know, with the short off season. So I probably say that because, like, like you said, you know, they, looking back at myself, you know, I had, you know, training camp and all that, and you know, they just come straight in, you know, no preseason, nothing. So I think, yeah, that probably made a difference. For me. How impressive! There's only, one, there's only one football. I mean, people were complaining, you know, about Mike. You know, Mike not getting the ball, uh, you know, for quite a while. And now, you know, Mike's got a lot of touchdowns, but um, there's only one football, and y'all have so many talented players out there to feed. Is you can't get mad when they throw the ball to AB. You can't get mad when they throw the ball to Gronk. They're they're all special. I, I, let me ask you to just kind of uh, self scout a guy like AB who's just now getting his feet wet on this team, learning the offense. Uh, do you see him, you know, eventually once it's once he's not thinking his way through it, you, you see him being that special guy he's been in this league for a long time? Does he still have it? Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, uh, you know, he came in that first weekend. Uh, you know, we were, we kind of – I think we had just had to play a Monday game or something or a Sunday night late. And uh, so, yeah, our tempo was like, you know, quarter speed or whatever. He's out there sprinting, you know, the clock, you know, that, that next-gen stats and stuff. So, he was in like 20 miles per hour, you know, on his deep post routes and stuff. So, yeah, everything's still there. He's still on the jugs and things like that, you know. Uh, so yeah, he, he's definitely still got it. We just gotta, yeah, get him keep meshing and things like that. But I think, yeah, yeah, I think it's all gonna click at the right time, man. So, you know, once we get in that that tournament, it makes some noise. Like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, I, you, we we talked a little bit about the hogs up front. We've talked a little bit about rookies. Can Bro. you? Can, uh, we know everybody, you know, in that locker room. I know what you're doing. Everybody loved Dot. Everybody loved Dot, you know. But now we've got a new guy in town. Can you talk about how impressive Tristan Wirfs has been as a rookie, going through the same things that 
every rookie in the league is going through, and yet looking like maybe the best right tackle in the NFL, bro. Can you talk about how fucking impressive this kid's been? Yeah, definitely. They definitely, yeah, uh, they found a, a stud in him because, uh, yeah, like you said, he's, he's had some tough matchups too, you know, from mm-hmm. we went out the going against Cam. And then uh, I remember the prime hey, time. Uh, yeah, Bosa, uh, Khalil Mack. And he, you know, he's doing more than holding his own, obviously. And, he, you know, he's getting those blocks for me in the run game too. So, you know, it's it's a perfect marriage. And I think, yeah, his, his sky's a, or his potential is the limit, you know. Um, and also, yeah, uh, one of the other linemen was telling me, you know, he's, he's probably like strongest – Lyman in the group too, so far. So that, that's saying something Dang. too. Got that jump out the pool strength, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Hey, he's athletic. I'm like, bro, like, what can't you do? You know, can you so. jump out the pool, Rojo? Can you jump out the pool? Nah, jump? I can't even do that, man. That's I wouldn't even try. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, Rojo, can you speak to um? You know, th- there's always this this phrase around team and family, and we're, we're a tight knit group. But I feel like specifically with us. And we're on the outside. I'm totally just fucking throwing darts blindly at a wall here. But um, you got two receivers and Mike Evans. I don't know if you've seen the highlight of his rookie year where he fucking picked up a DB and literally fucking suplexed him. Oh, and then you have Godwin, who's just a fucking dog. It's got to be something, man, where they get hyped when you, when you break one. But does it ignite the team when, when Godwin gets a big pass down the field or Mike finally gets the fucking ball thrown to him downfield? Like, it's got to be something that just gives some juice to the team. Yeah, definitely. And that's the thing, yeah, just, you know, uh, I always try to, you know, not be the, the dude to, you know, wait on another guy to make a play, but uh, just try to be the one to make it. So, uh, yeah, but definitely, like, those are the guys, you know, who get it going for us and things like that. So, uh, yeah, it's always good seeing. But like you say, we only got one ball, so. Yeah, I mean, if you look at how this team is built, we are built to be physical. I mean, you're, you're, you're a, a physical back. Mike's a physical receiver. Godwin's a physical linebacker playing wide receiver you know they, they drafted tyler johnson who looks like he's he you know he's a bodybuilder like they got these physical guys out there and and there's got to be part of you that would love you know to play that old school style of football where where they hand you the ball 20 25 times a game and let you and let you carry this team a little bit and i'm sure you would love to see that obviously you you have no say in the game plan um or maybe you do maybe you you go over there and you tell left which listen right. i know tom brady's got a loud voice but i got a voice too yeah left which i'm trying to become seven time that's what you need you need to put yeah, that exactly. shit on the table yeah that's uh, the goal, man. i got all these hey, fingers and no rings come hey, on 12. Hey, 12. I got man i'm trying to, I'm trying to get yeah it. bro hey, hey 12 yes that's all you gotta do hey 12 listen here 12 you're six time just ride me to seven time bro Just, yeah, let's do it man Lucky like number that. seven, right here. Okay, what's what's the best compliment you ever got on the field, man? Because it, it it seems like sometimes you catch people off guard. Like they look at you, like you said, you're not you're not two forty, two thirty, you're not that dude. But bro, you run people the fuck over. Have you ever gotten the compliment? Like God damn, like you know how sometimes quarterbacks get up like, hey, good hit, that's crazy. Or okay. Devin White the other day with McCaffrey was like, yo, McCaffrey told him, yo, you're the best, bro. Have you ever gotten a compliment? What's the best compliment you got on the field from like catching somebody off guard with your power? Because they know you're shifty, they know you're speedy, but damn. dude. Yeah, that's, a, that's another good one. I can't think, <clears throat> think right now. I, I ain't really, yeah, I don't, maybe, man, I'm not getting the compliments there. Yeah, nah, I think about that. Hey, man, man, you're, man, you're embarrassing people. What the fuck you expect after you stiff-arm that cat <laughs> on the way to the like, touchdown? Thanks for hey, stiff-arming me into the bro. <laughs> hey, bro, yo, that, that, that stiff-arm on that touchdown? Dope, man. That shit was flying. <laughs> hey, hey, hey McC- McCaffrey got it, bro. McCaffrey was like, Devin, man, you keep, god damn, I can't get nowhere, bro. You the goat. <laughs> Yeah, but that's that's dumb, man. That's like that's like giving me a compliment. You don't want to give me a compliment. You don't want to give Devin Wade a compliment if you're the running back that he's shadowing. You just yeah, don't. I wouldn't be out there giving compliments either. Yeah. Bro, yeah. Joe, when you got drafted, you know, I'm I'm not an SC guy, but uh, um, I, you know, I went and did my YouTube scouting of you, and you had a lot of long runs at SC. It seemed like you had a lot of breakaway runs. You had a lot of a lot of big runs. Is it finally? Is it feel? Does it feel good to finally just like get that off your back and like finally? Here in the NFL, I got I got one of those big ones. Yeah, definitely. That that one felt good. Uh, like you said, get the monkey off your back, and you know, I kind of felt like you know, uh, just gave me that boost again. You know, like you know, this is the league, but you know, I still got that that home run uh, ability. So, is it a confidence thing? Like when, as a rookie coming in this league, not knowing if your your game is going to transfer over? I mean, did you struggle with some confidence issues year one? I think yeah, rookie year uh, probably wasn't yeah physically ready. Honestly, you know. I was about like 206 and, you know, just in the trenches like that. Yeah, I probably wasn't ready for that. So, you know, yeah, probably. 
to go on the back burner a little bit. Yeah, I still I'll remember go. your first touchdown though. You you stuck your foot in the ground. I was like, God, that that was. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I haven't seen that in a while. I was like, ah, you were like, whoa, what was yeah, that? Yeah, I get the Browns. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. We we have to tell pe- the people who are watching this show get the fuck out there, get on Twitter, go to NFL.com, whatever the fuck it is, and vote for this man. We this need man in twenty-seven in the Let's fucking go. Pro Bowl. I want to see the entire offensive line in the Pro Bowl, all of them. All five of them. Get everybody in the fucking Pro Bowl. I need to see. You know, it's crazy, man. I think it's Kappa. Kappa, like, leads the offensive lineman with votes, which is oh, – yeah. he's, he's flown under the radar. We Kappa haven't mentioned his name slept at all. On. Nobody ever talks about Kappa. No, but no, he's – he's, he's turned, never here. He's, he's turned into – together, man. That's my boy. He's, he's, turn, he's turned into, like, a baby version of, of Red out there. He's, he's got <laughs> – he, he, he looks like he's got the same – I don't know, that, that pissed off – I don't take no shit attitude. I fucking love that shit. Do we love Red out here? We love him, bro. Rojo, have you seen Red absolutely abuse people? Like, do you ever, do you ever stand back and be like, you just oh, yeah. did that to a grown man? Yeah, like he, you know, he'll he'll do it in practice. Like, you know, if he pancakes him, he'll just sit on him. Like, you know, like you're not, you're not making this play. So, again, you know, I get a lot of juice from those guys too. You know, when he's out there, you know, getting ready to knock off anybody's head. Like, I'm like, yeah, my dog's with me. I'm we gonna ride. You know, let's get it, man. Oh, well, Rojo, I gotta ask like, this question. What's it like to run into Vita Vea? Oh my god, <laughs> yeah, that's he, gotta. He's he, he's he's a heavy one. I ain't, yeah, he's probably yeah the, the heaviest thing that's ever fell on my ankles. So. Have you ever put it on him? Like you ever sift on him into the ground coming through the hole and just look back at him like, not today, Vita. I not think today. in college I actually shook him in the hole Whew. at Washington. And I was at SC. Oh, yeah. It was it was like yeah, counter play. He just overran it, you know. No, no, no. He didn't run it. You stiff armed him, bro. You stiff armed him. He didn't <laughs> run it. You know, that, that, that's oh, man. I, that, that was that was the Rojo strength, bro. He, he ain't overrun it. He, he, he said, Maui, not today, Vita, Maui. You think Vita's got the agility to, to get some goal line carries? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I remember y'all remember the touchdown he had when he he ran the, the flat route. Yeah. <laughs> he played he played running back in high school. Yeah, that, that that's what I'm saying. That's I, had I don't unfair, know what time he was, but either way, it's still crazy. Yeah, who um, runs a faster forty? Him or him or Tom? I don't know. I uh, put my Vita money Vita. on Vita. Vita Fea. Yeah. Vita Fea for Vita's, sure, bro. Vita's calves are as big as Tom's head. <laughs> six six times ain't, six, six, ain't getting out of first gear. I've seen oh, him run. Have, have you seen the highlight of him at the combine, bro? It was. Yeah, yeah. I seen that they put the like. The baggy shorts, the baggy shirts. <laughs> Took him an hour to run a 40. It was it was not pretty. They put that dude in the suit next to him. He, he, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Rich Eisen. Yeah. Rich Eisen. Hey, Rojo, man, we appreciate you giving us the time, bro, to hang out with us. Uh, hopefully, you've learned a lot about food in the Tampa Bay area. We've learned we've learned some stuff from you. Um, yeah, I'll now give this you- is the official Rojo, Rojo yeah. podcast. Now, when you come on, you got to give us, you know, some food, food ideas, too. You know, like, since you're stuck in the house and you're eating Uber all day, come with it next time. Hey, b- by the way, before we get too much in this closing stuff and the, the sponsored shit, Rojo, I don't remember the website too well, but we're going to link it below. Donate, motherfuckers. Come on. One dollar. If everybody donates one fucking dollar, that's, it, it, it adds up. Mm-hmm. Donate more, though, because I know you fuckers got money. You got them damn stimulus checks. <laughs> damn it. That, that, that was like three months ago, man. I don't even know if they got that it. was like Listen, six months ago. We're bro. getting another one, bro. Another one? <laughs> another one. Another one. Rojo, thanks for hanging out, bro. Uh, we will definitely link We will definitely link the charity that you mentioned. Um at the bottom here in the comment section um, or in the caption, whatever you want to call it. Um, the go out there, enjoy your bye week. Go have some fucking dinner, bro. I hope you get barbecue. I hope you get tacos and you get fucking wings all at one time. Fuck it. I don't give a fuck, Coach Luke. Let this man eat. Man is yeah. hungry. Are you, are you Tom? Stop the watching. Hungry. On. This is the Hungry I Podcast. Like, I can spend the time a little burn off. Yeah, man, just just go like he said. Go run up the the landfill a couple yeah, of you're, times. You're young, Rojo. You think like you know, in ten years in, you'll get that Jerome Bettis body, or you, <laughs> you'll still stay still stay <laughs> stunned. Nah, Luke, Luke ain't gonna let me, man. That's not gonna happen. Yeah, there was I'm a missed, moment I, Jerome Bettis looked like he just didn't train and just ate. Like that's all he I missed, did. I've yeah, missed that, that, that running back. Good feeling though. That what? The best feet though. It's gotta be a good feeling though to go out there like that. Just. <laughs> well, it's gotta be good to just eat whatever you want, man. But that dude, he wouldn't get out of bed till like Wednesday. He couldn't physically get out of bed. He was his body was so beat up, his ankles and knees. He was also it, still it, he was still digesting his post 
game meal. That's why. That's all. Yeah. Basically, what was happening. You kind of look like him, popular. I just realized that. Whoa, uh, chill. Oh, hell no. No, like your face, dog. Your face, not your body. No, he looked like a fucking fridge. I'm talking about your face, man. Relax. relax hey, Sam, bro. your beard you. looks like his shit, like all painted on and airbrushed and yeah. shit. That's don't, just don't like. Don't be jealous. Don't be jealous. Bro, I'm beautiful. You see, you seen Beijing, bro. You you seen Beijing when you when you see it, bro. You know it when you see. It. That's Beijing, bro. That's all color. No, it's oh, not. That's, I'm oh. Arab, bro. I was born with this shit. All I had to do was let it grow. All right, finish your out, bro. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> Hope you guys fucking dominate the, these next four games. We'll see you in the fucking Super Bowl. Get Sir. this man some Pro Bowl votes. And please give this man the fucking ball. Go Bucks. Feed Rojo. Feed him. Rojo.